In this tutorial, we are building a photorealistic glass material for architectural scenes. It's ideal for flat surfaces such as windows, storefronts and interior glass partitions, and it's designed to bring a new level of realism to your renders and interactive projects. The secret to photorealistic glass is simple. First understand the physics, then simulate it. Let's quickly break down how glass interacts with the environment in the real world, so we can then recreate that magic in Unreal Engine. First, let's perform the basic setup for our material. In the Details panel, find the Blend Mode parameter and change it to Translucent. This tells the engine that our material is semi-transparent. Next, in the Translucency section, find the Lighting Mode. For the best quality, change it to Surface Translucency Volume. Surface Forward Shading is also a valid but older method. Finally, just below that, find Refraction method and set it to Index of Refraction. This will allow us to control how light bends in a physically correct way using a real-world index of refraction. Ready to go beyond the tutorial? The complete black box project is now available on my Patreon. This is your chance to explore the entire scene, deconstruct the advanced materials and analyze the full lighting setup for both interior and exterior. You'll get the fully configured project ready for you to reverse engineer every detail. Thank you for your support. Before we jump into the material editor, let's first look at a few photos of real-world glass. If you look closely at this photo, you'll see that even though the glass appears perfectly flat, its surface actually has subtle distortions and waves. This is a key detail because, like any material in the real world, glass is never perfectly uniform. We'll use this principle to add a crucial layer of realism to our material. The next key point is that glass is never perfectly clean. Even on a freshly washed pane, you can always find dust particles and subtle smudges. Exterior glass in particular is constantly exposed to the elements and gathers a layer of grime over time. We will definitely factor this aspect into our material. Another key observation. The refractive effect is much more pronounced on the edges and cuts of the glass. When light passes through the thicker profile of an edge, it bends more dramatically. If we look closely at this glass, we'll notice an effect where its edges appear darker and more opaque, while the center remains more transparent. Now that we've analyzed these factors, let's create a glass material that accounts for them. Let's start with the base color. We're going to create a gradient effect by blending two colors, one for the center of the glass and another for the edges. To do this, create two vector parameters, name them base color 1 and base color 2 respectively. So we can really see what's happening, let's set two completely different colors for now. Create a linear interpolate node to blend these two colors. Now we need to create a procedural mask to control this blend, creating a smooth transition from the edges to the center. It's important to know that the Fresnel effect will not work here. Fresnel is dependent on the camera's viewing angle, whereas we need a static effect that is unique to each pane of glass and tied to its geometry, not the player's position. We'll start with a texture coordinate node. This is our starting point, providing the 2D UV coordinates for each point on the object's surface. Next, create a subtract node. To move the origin to the center of the UV map, subtract a constant value of 0.5 from the coordinates. This step shifts the coordinate center to the zero point. Now add a length node. It calculates the distance of each point from this new center. The output is a perfect radial gradient, zero at the center and one at the edges. To control the sharpness of the gradient, create a power node. Convert its exp input into a scalar parameter and name it base color falloff. Set its default value to 2. This is our main tool for adjusting the mask's shape. After the power node, add a saturate node. This node ensures that after all the mass operations, there are no invalid values, like numbers greater than 1, which is crucial for masks. And finally, to conveniently use this part of the logic elsewhere in the graph, create a named rewrote node and name it mask base color. Then connect mask base color to alpha channel of our lerp node. Connect the result to the base color output. Now let's check how this works in a material instance. 
As you can see, we have two colors, red in the center which smoothly fades to blue at the edges. By changing the base color falloff parameter, you can control the intensity of this gradient. This is the exact effect we need. And here's one very important tip to make sure this works for you. Our mask is drawn on top of the UV map. So, for each pane of glass to have its own nice circular gradient, its UVs need to be stretched to fill the entire texture square. Next, let's configure the key physical properties of the material. Create scalar parameters for both metallic and specular. Set the default value for specular to 1, for metallic set the value to 0. Now we're going to create a grime effect by controlling the roughness of our glass. First, find and add the MS Roughness Adjustments Material function to the graph. This useful function is available if you have the Quixel Bridge plugin installed and it will help us precisely control the range of roughness values. Convert its mean roughness and max roughness inputs into scalar parameters. Set mean roughness to 0 and max roughness to 0.2. Next, create a texture sample node and select the black and white grime map you want to use. I'm going to use this dirt texture. Finally, let's set up the basic tiling for this texture. Now let's configure the opacity using our procedural mask to create the effect of denser glass at the edges. Copy the entire node chain we created for mask base color and paste it in a new section of the graph. To avoid confusion, rename the copied parameters, rename the base color falloff parameter to opacity falloff and the named reroute to mask opacity. We now have an independent mask to control transparency. Next, create two scalar parameters that will define our transparency range. Center opacity, set a low value like 0.1, this is the center's transparency. Edge opacity, set a high value like 0.9, this is the edge's density. Now let's blend these two values using linear interpolate node. Connect center opacity to the A input. Connect edge opacity to the B input. Connect your mask opacity to the alpha input. Since our mask is 0 in the center and 1 at the edges, the lerp will select the value from A for the center and from B for the edges. Finally, connect the result from the lerp node to the main opacity input on the material. Now we can control the glass's transparency by setting different values for the center and the edges. Now let's add some subtle imperfections to our glass to make it more realistic. We'll create this surface warping effect using a normal map. Find and add the QMF normal adjustments function to the graph. Convert its normal strength input into a scalar parameter. Name it something like normal intensity and set a very low default value, for example 0.1. For realism this effect should be barely noticeable. Next create a texture sample node and select your distortion map. This should be a special, very soft normal map, not a regular texture. I'm going to use this texture. And finally, let's build the simple logic to control the tiling of this texture. For the final step, let's configure the refraction. Instead of using a constant value, we'll create a dynamic effect where the distortion intensity increases as we view the glass at a steeper angle. This simulates how light behaves in the real world and is known as the Fresnel effect. First, create a linear interpolate node. This will blend our two IOR values, create two scalar parameters, EOR mean, set its value to 1.0. This is the index of refraction for air, meaning no distortion connected to the A input on the LERP. IOR max, set its value to 1.1, this will be our maximum distortion, connect it to the B input, create a Fresnel node, set its exponent input to a high value, for example 10. The higher this number, the more sharply the distortion will appear only at the very edges. Finally, connect the output of the Fresnel node to the alpha input on your LERP. The Fresnel node determines the angle we are viewing the surface from. Alright, all the logic is in place, all that's left is to play with the parameters to get that perfect result. And there you have it. I think the result is fantastic and I'm really happy with it. Of course, remember that your perfect settings might be a little different, especially depending on your scene's lighting, 
so feel free to experiment. And here are the exact settings I've dialed in. And for the final touch that really completes the effect, I used two separate materials. One for the main, flat surface, and a second one specifically for the edges. The edge material is simply a duplicate of our main glasses material instance, but with two key adjustments. I significantly decreased its transparency, increased the opacity and set a higher index of refraction. Thanks to this simple technique, the edges look dense, dark and highly refractive, exactly like real thick cut glass. And that's a wrap. If you want to dive deeper into this project, the complete source files including the final material function are available via the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, I'd love to hear what topic we should tackle next, so be sure to leave your ideas and suggestions in the comments below. See you in the next one.